Hmm. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Lyon. This is my channel, Lyon Editing, where I help writers refine their craft and start their careers. I am an editor. I work for the novel editing company, Dot and Dash LLC. We do everything from copy editing, sensitivity reading, and author coaching. If you'd like to get in contact with us, just click on the links below and give us a holler. Today we are going to be talking about the three elements of a successful debut novel or at least three that are often included in uh, debut novels that do well. I will give you two examples with each element. First of all, what is a debut novel? A debut novel is just the first book an author publishes and often their entrance into the industry itself. It's important, but it can also be very frightening because you need to make that first sale in order to make your next sale. So let's go over three different elements you can include in your first novel. Number one, lean into your strengths. This means that if your passions, your things that get you excited, the things that you've researched in the past, and weaving those into your story to create a strong backbone that engages readers and makes them want to read. A good example of this is The Martian by Andy Weir. The Martian is a book about an astronaut stranded on Mars and his survival story. It has a lot of things you can learn, including a comedic timing in writing and compelling conflict, as well as a successful story of self-publishing. But one of the things we can take away is that the author leaned into his strengths. He was a software engineer who had an, a special interest in space travel, and everything about space travel got him excited. He says himself, to a nerd like me, working out all the math and physics for Mark's problems and solutions was fun. He was extremely passionate about the science aspects of the story, and that bled through onto the page. It's a very successful book and a fun read. This is all because the author did his research and loved what he did. These were his strengths. Now, I would give him that feedback that his prose are a little limited. Sometimes I couldn't tell who was talking because of the sparse dialogue markers. And guess what? That's okay. It's all right that it has weaknesses because those strengths make it so good to read. So if you lean into your strengths, it can make up for other aspects you can be lacking for that first novel. Another example that goes along with writers going into their strengths is If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. This is a thriller about a group of Shakespeare actors who are going through their last year of college and it's very harrowing. This book relies heavily on Shakespearean motifs and language, which all played into the author's strengths. The author is an actor herself, as well as that she got a master's in Shakespearean studies from King's College in London, and she obviously loves language. She obviously loves the art of creating words, and that showed on the page. It was interesting to read because we went in depth with Shakespeare and theater, and those things made it worth reading. Ask yourself, what are your interests? What do you care about? Do you like reading romance? Do you like writing mystery? What genres do you like? And more importantly, what things get you up in the morning? Do you like cartography? Do you like 90s fashion? Do you like video games? Do you like lists? Do you love lists? I love lists. Uh, my horror novel, with, which is just a long list that becomes slowly more deranged, I'm sure will take off one day. Kidding. But you have to ask yourself these important questions of what is going to make you excited to not only read your own work again and again and again, but what's going to make you write it initially. The biggest way to get your readers to care about your subject is to care about your subject yourself. This is your debut. This is your first. This is you going onto the market, and you want to do it with your best foot forward, with excitement, with pizzazz. Some writers will often see what's selling, like fairies or political intrigue or palace politics, and sometimes they will go into the market trying to copy another writer. If another writer gets you excited and you find inspiration, that's okay. But this is your debut. Do it as yourself. So don't chase the market. Finally, I'm not saying don't work on your weaknesses. Definitely work on your weaknesses as well. But first, you want to capitalize on your strengths, 
find out what they are, and then go in with your best foot forward. Number two, it's all right to go simple. Newer writers often come with this idea that you need to be complex in order to stand out, in order to sell. And this sometimes looks like stories with multiple timelines, settings with alien characteristics that readers can't relate to, they can't really understand it. And then on top of all that, they put these anti-heroes who are morally gray that need pages and pages to develop. I'm not saying you can't do it, but you often bite off more than you can chew and there's just so many moving parts that things get lost in the muddle. And the truth is you don't need to be complex to stand out. You don't need to do everything at once. A good example of this is actually one of the most famously successful debut novels on the market and that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is her debut novel and it's about a group of liberal arts students in Vermont. It has mystery, it has intrigue, and normally it wouldn't be called simple necessarily, but it is simple for the author. There are several aspects that Donna Tartt kept at a lower, easy setting. For instance, the POV is a single camera. It follows one point of view with Richard Poppin. There is no switching of POVs. In her next novel, Little Friend, she will do symphonic POV storytelling. Symphonic, which is like War and Peace by Tolstoy, is widely considered the most difficult way to tell a story as it dips into multiple characters' headspaces throughout. Now Donna Tartt does this later in her in her career, but she starts out at a much simpler place, and that's all right. In fact, I would say that's a good thing, as there's room to grow and keep expanding your skill. Secondly, Donna Tartt went to a Vermont liberal arts small college. The setting of The Secret History is a small liberal arts college in Vermont. The setting is familiar to the author, and thus on easy mode. Finally, the plot itself is straightforward through a thriller novel. It has a hook crisis midpoint. It follows a traditional structure. That's good because she really shines in her other aspects such as pacing and execution. She goes into what she's good at and keeps the other things simple. This is a powerful way to do your debut novel. Another example of simple but powerful is A Man Called Uwe by Frederick Backman. This is a story with a simple premise. It is a grumpy old man who gets new neighbors. The plot and setting are not that complex, but the characters and voice are rich and deep, and this is a funny, extremely well done story that doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. And that also lets other aspects come out that are so compelling, and this works. And I don't want to discourage you. If you have a complex story to tell, then tell that story. But I want to give you permission. I want to give you permission to go easy with certain settings. You know, make your setting easy, make your characters easy, and then make your plot complex. Or do Tolkien world building, but keep those characters and plot simple from point A to point B. And that's all right. It's okay to show off just one aspect and have fewer moving parts. In fact, I would say that's a good thing. Number three, write something only you can write. This means telling your honest truth, finding your heart and what makes you tick and putting that on the page. A great example of this is Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stefan Kaboski. This is an example of a debut novel with also a straightforward premise, but it is done so excellently in the execution that it shines. Let me read a passage for you to show how the voice is exemplary. Dear friend, I am writing to you because she said you listen and understand and didn't try to sleep with that person at that party even though you could have. Please don't try to figure out who she is because then you might figure out who I am and I really don't want you to do that. I will call people by different names or generic names because I don't want you to find me. I didn't enclose a return address for the same reason. I mean nothing bad by this. Honest. I just need to know that someone out there listens and understands and doesn't try to sleep with people even if they could have. I need to know that these people exist. The voice is simple and I would argue sweet. Furthermore, this story is semi-autobiographical. It is a story only the author could tell because it comes from his own experience and his own voice. 
and it's done through honesty. I would say if you if you want to write a successful debut novel, you got to turn inward and look at your own truth and bring that forward. Another example of this that is not literary fiction is 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. It is a magical realism story and it also has a very unique voice and complex way of telling the story. I will read you a passage from this as well to just demonstrate how the voice stands out. When I was seven, I found a door. I suspect I should capitalize that word so you understand I'm not talking about your garden or common variety door that leads reliably to a white tiled kitchen or a bedroom closet. When I was seven, I found a door. There, look how tall and proud the word stands on the page now. The belly of that D looks like a black archway leading into white nothing. When you see that word, I imagine a little prickle of familiarity makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You don't know a thing about me. You can't see me sitting at this yellow wood desk, the salt sweet breeze rifling these pages like a reader looking for her bookmark. You can't see the scars that twist and knot across my skin. You don't even know my name. This is such an interesting way to start a story, and it just demonstrates it's not the magic in this story that makes it compelling. It is the way it's told. Execution of story is more important than story itself quite often. As a final point, I don't want to give into this like a, this cult of originality I often find within writers. I'm not saying you have to be original. You don't need to sacrifice any lambs at, you know, the altar of needing to be different and not like anyone else. It's all right to write stories that are similar to other stories. But that truth within yourself, that's something you can bring outward and will be unique no matter what. So you have to ask yourself, who are you? What do you want? What makes you tick? Look inward, ask questions, and if you go into your inner psyche, you will often find important things you need to say in a unique way that you're going to say them. In short, several elements of a successful debut novel are one, lean into your strengths, two, don't be afraid to go simple, and three, write something only you can write. The more that you practice them and the more that you ask yourself, are you being honest? Are you going for your interests? Are you doing the research? Are you showing off your best aspects? The more you do these things, the stronger your writing is going to be. Again, I am Jacqueline Lyon. I work for Dot and Dash LLC. And if you'd like to get in contact with us, please click on the links below. If you have a future video you would like to see me do on writing, please leave it in the comments and I will check it out and we'll see what we can do in the future. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe if you can or if you want to and I'll see you later.